So guys, yesterday we had a pretty crazy Australian Grand Prix and at the very end, the craziness really peaked with so many crashes, but one of them was towards almost the very front of the field between Ferrari driver Carlos Sainz and Aston Martin driver Fernando Alonso. Now, I am now going to get into, as the title of this video says, why I believe his penalty, Carlos Sainz's penalty, for the contact with Fernando Alonso was unfair. And we're going to, you know, look at certain things to prove from my perspective as to why it's unfair. Let's firstly, though, review the incident itself. So let's look at Carlos Sainz's on board, which I think gives us the best uh, view as to uh, seeing this incident. You can see here on the rundown to turn one, Carlos Sainz is side by side with the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll. Alonso, which is the third car from the front, is just to the left of Lewis Hamilton's car, which is in the middle of the track as they're going down into turn one. And then at this point, you can see Carlos Sainz is firmly towards the inside of turn one. Alonso, though, which again is the third car from the front and is on the left-hand side, um, he is still around the outside of Hamilton, but as you'll see in a moment, he positions his car in a way that he can get a better exit, and that's why he is positioned at the moment on this uh, screenshot uh, to the left of Lewis Hamilton, so he can get a better exit going through turn two and down towards turn three. Carlos Sainz, though, at this point is, you know, looking absolutely fine. He's not making any mistakes, he's not going way too deep into the corner or anything like that. And then as we come to this on board, you can see Fernando Alonso is just starting to, you know, let Hamilton go to the position of uh, the exit of turn one that he wants him to go into and start to uh, come more across, say, to the right on the exit of turn one to get that better exit. But with Carlos Sainz, because... Fernando has left the inside line wide open for a car to come through. Carlos Sainz, rightfully so, is having a look into the first corner. And at this point, you can see he's turning right and is still, you know, not going massively deep. He's not spearing off the track or anything. And if we move, not to that one, if we move to this screenshot, you can see, you know, he's turning right and he's pretty much on the apex of the corner. And is not going to run wide at this point. He's going to easily make the track, but um, it is going to be close with Fernando Alonso on the exit as Alonso is just waiting for Hamilton to go to the exit of the corner so he can uh, get that better exit compared to Hamilton through turn two. But again, because Alonso has left the inside line wide open, I don't think there's any problem with Carlos Sainz going for that inside line. You know, it's... Um, you know, obviously, this was the third start of the race. There was only like, what, two laps to go. And Carlos Sainz, I think, was fully entitled to go for that gap. There was a massive gap there to go for. And like I said, I think he was fully entitled to go for it. And as you can see on this onboard, Carlos Sainz is still turning his steering wheel right because he knows it's going to be very close between him and Fernando. And... There's no doubt, even if Fernando was not there, Carlos would still make the corner. So I do want to clear up the um, you know, certain, I guess, comments I've seen from certain people online saying, oh, Carlos went in way too deep and was never going to make the corner, which is absolute rubbish. He was easily going to make the corner. He did not go too deep. And because Alonso now is focused purely on Lewis Hamilton, um, he's now positioning himself perfectly for the the switchback and for a better exit from turn one and that's why Alonso is more over on the exit of turn one to the right than Lewis Hamilton is and because Alonso is so focused on Hamilton and probably didn't know where Carlos Sainz was at all or, or if anyone was alongside him at this point that's really why contact was made as you can see at this point but if i go back i do want to clarify fernando alonso did absolutely nothing wrong 
What he did was absolutely fine. He didn't squeeze Carlos Sainz to the inside of the corner or anything. He didn't uh, violently come across. But also, you know, if I go back to say, not that uh, on board, this on board shot. Also, Carlos Sainz did not do anything wrong. And I don't think really could have done anything differently to avoid this accident. He didn't go too deep into the corner. He did try to avoid Alonso because you can see, if you look at the steering wheel through these onboards, he is still turning right. He is trying his best to avoid contact with Alonso, but contact was, in the end, made between the two drivers. And in racing, that just happens. Sometimes, as we saw with Lance Stroll and Charles Leclerc at turn three on the first lap of the race, sometimes... Contact between two drivers just happens. It's not always somebody's fault. And as we'll get into in a moment, I think really the stewards should have taken into, a, uh, taken into account that it was, you know, the restart of a race and it was the first lap after a restart. And the stewards for this incident apparently did take it into account and did also take it into account for other incidents as well. And yeah, I think we'll get on to that now because I find the stewards' reasoning for giving Carlos Sainz a penalty um, not very good at all. So let's get on to that now. So here it is. Here is the official reasoning. So the stewards reviewed all of um, or everything they could to determine uh, what happened with this incident, positioning, martial system, data, video, timing, telemetry, team radio, all of that, on boards, all of that stuff. Um, and, and they determined that a uh, collision occurred between Alonso and Sainz and that Carlos Sainz, uh, in their view, was wholly to blame for the collision. And they say, firstly, that Alonso was significantly ahead of, of uh, Sainz at the first corner and nevertheless... Sites drove into car 14. Now, if we go back to the apex shot of Sainz, is Alonso really that far ahead? I mean, Alonso's definitely ahead, but they're kind of... Um, I'd say Sainz is probably halfway alongside at most, or maybe 40% of the way alongside. Obviously, Fernando was going to get a better exit here because um, his line for the exit... Uh, better, but Sainz having the better entry. But still, at the apex of the corner, Carlos was um, almost or pretty much alongside. And even if you go to this picture, maybe he's not, you know, absolutely halfway alongside Alonso, but he is still far enough alongside to be racing Fernando. It's not like Fernando was completely ahead or 95% ahead. And Carlos Sainz just speared into the back of him. I really don't think that was the case. But the stewards say that Alonso was significantly ahead. Again, I don't think Alonso was significantly ahead. That's my view. Um, I don't know how they view significantly ahead. I don't know if they view it as more than 50% or, um, you know, if you have at least 50% ahead of... Or your car ahead of the other. I, I again, I don't know. I would be curious to know, um, in terms of the FIA and their rulings for racing, what they deem as significantly ahead. Because I, I think Alonso, yeah, he was ahead. I'm not d denying that at all. But I don't think significantly ahead is necessarily the right wording there. Um, I think he was ahead, but Sainz was still alongside him to a certain extent. Um. And nevertheless, Sainz drove to car 14, they say, causing it to spin leave the track. We accordingly imposed a five-second penalty on Carlos Sainz. Then they go on to say, for the avoidance of doubt, we took into account the fact that this collision took place at the first lap of the restart. By convention, or when by convention, the stewards would typically take a more lenient, <coughs> oh, sorry, take a more lenient view of incidents. And as we'll get into in a moment, they did take a more lenient view of other incidents on the restart of the race. Um, and then they go on to say, though, after that um, that small bit of text saying that the stewards took into a fact or took into account that the collision took place on the first lap of a restart. 
they go on to say, however, in this particular case, notwithstanding the fact that it was equivalent of a first lap incident, we considered that there was sufficient gap for science to take steps to avoid the collision and failed to do so. Now, if we go back to the onboards again, here, I think, you know, science, it's not like he speared through and really just took Fernando off to the left of the track. Science was not going too deep into the corner. But also, if we go back a bit further, I don't really see in this position what Science could have done uh, much more. Um, maybe he could have braked slightly more so he could be a bit more further to the right of the track on the exit of Turn 1. But I, I, I really don't think that would have made a massive difference at all. And possibly contact would have happened anyway between Sainz and Alonso. And I don't see where the significant gap necessarily was uh, for Sainz to avoid this accident. Because again, he, you know, he wasn't uh, way away from the apex. He wasn't locking his brakes or going way too deep into the corner. And as you can see with the steering wheel, he was trying his absolute best to avoid contact with Alonso. So, yeah, uh, I really don't think there was sufficient gap. And with Alonso leaving the inside line open, like I said earlier, I think Sainz has every right to go for that inside gap. I think he has every right to go for it. Um, and, you know, that's racing at the end of the day. Uh, but if we go back to what the steward said... Um, yeah, they uh, considered that there was a sufficient gap for science to take avoiding uh, or take steps to avoid the collision and fail to do so. And then the rest is just, uh, well, not relevant. But yeah, I, I completely disagree with what the stewards are saying here. Um, I don't think Alonso was, you know, way ahead of science in the corner. I think it was, um, I mean, they weren't side by side but Sainz did have a decent amount of his car alongside so they were definitely racing on the exit of turn one um and then yeah I think considering that the stewards take a more lenient view of incidents on the first lap which I think you should because the first lap of any uh race um you're gonna have accidents a lot of the time and you can't just be throwing out penalties just simply because there are accidents and I think it is right to take a more lenient view of incidents on the first lap of a restart or the first lap of a race. I don't get what about this incident um, is so bad that they had to punish Carlos Sainz. I really don't understand why. Um, and like I said, I don't believe there was a sufficient gap for Sainz to take steps to avoid the collision. I, I really don't believe that was the case. Um, how I see it is, you know... Alonso left the inside line open. Sainz went for the gap. Tried to avoid Alonso. Alonso, you know, he did nothing wrong. He didn't come across on Sainz or anything. And contact was made. Again, sometimes that does happen in racing. Where contact is made and there's nothing you can do about it. But, um, massive hypocrisy from the FIA. Uh, not from previous races, but from almost the... Um, uh, what do you call it, or from the, you know, exact part of the race uh, that happened, they, um, yeah, were very lenient with another incident that happened on uh, lap 57 with the crash between Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon. And, uh, yeah, they were summoned to the stewards. It took quite a long time until um, the stewards um, came to their uh, conclusion for this incident but let's just quickly go through the reason that they did not take any further action so the stewards heard from pierre gazi and esteban ocon and a team representative and reviewed all of the evidence and determined that it was a first lap racing incident both cars recognized and accepted this as such in the circumstances we took no further action now if you go and look back at that incident between Gasly and Ocon, at the time I thought it was, uh, you know, uh, that maybe Ocon turned Gasly around. But for me, it's just a first lap restart crash. But if you're going to portion the blame, probably you would have to go for Gasly because he did really squeeze Ocon into the wall. And that's why both Alpines went out. But how come Sites gets a penalty 
for, you know, touching Alonso and spinning him around, which wasn't, in my view, as bad possibly of an offence as what Gasly did to Ocon. But with Gasly and Ocon's incident, it's determined, well, it's just a first lap incident, uh, you know, uh, we'll just leave it go. But with science, they have to give a five-second penalty. I, I really don't understand that. Um, and I think, really, the FIA, very inconsistent, hypocritical, and weak with their stewarding. And uh, really the reasons for, um, with the stewards, the reasons that they gave for these two separate incidents were just really baffling. Absolutely baffling. And let's not forget as well, Logan Sargent piling into the back of Nick DeVries and taking him off the track and himself out of the race on the restart uh, on lap 57. That was never even put up for investigation. Which we go look and, uh, if you go look back at it, Logan quite clearly takes DeVries out and should probably have a grid penalty for the next race. It's like... I just don't get, I really don't get what their, um, what their thinking was. And really, again, weak from the stewards. Very, very weak indeed. But not only uh, do I disagree with what the um, stewards had to say with the science incident, and I think, again, the FIA very inconsistent and hypocritical with their uh, giving out or not giving out of penalties on lap 57... Even Fernando Alonso, the victim of that incident, does not think it's a penalty either. Let's get into what he said uh, after the race finished. He said, obviously, uh, I didn't know who touched me in that moment. I just felt it. Uh, in lap one of the first start, someone touched me in turn three. Uh, and then in the last restart, Carlos apparently touched me in turn one. Probably only in Jeddah had a normal start. In Bahrain, also in turn four, Lance touched me into turn four. Uh, so yeah, I'm very attractive out there, but our car is strong enough, so it doesn't matter if they keep touching us. Um, yeah, if you go and see, uh, I think for the post-race press conference when he said that, it's definitely funnier than when you just read it on a screen. Um, and then he goes on to say, probably the penalty is too harsh because on lap one, it is very difficult always to judge what the grip level is. And I think we don't go intentionally into another car because we know that we risk also our car and our final position. So sometimes you ended up in places that you wish you were not there in that moment, and it's just part of racing. I didn't see the re replay properly, but for me, it feels too harsh. And I 100% agree with him. It is way too harsh. I don't see how with, again, Gasly and Ocon, you can just say, eh, first lap incident, but with Sainz and Alonso, it's so egregious, so egregious, that Sainz has a penalty doesn't make any sense to me but guys if you do disagree with me please let me know in the comments section why do you disagree but please let me know most importantly with the incident itself what do you think Carlos Sainz could have done other than not going for the gap which I really don't think is a um, a good reason or really any reason at all the gap was clearly there they're racing on the first lap of a restart I think he had every right to go for that gap as anyone would do in racing but what reasons um or what things could carlos have done to avoid that incident please let me know in the comments section down below of this video guys just a reminder i will be live later at 8 p.m uk time to go over other incidents from the race such as leclerc and stroll um max and the grid hatching controversy also ocon versus gasly and even um, the incident of fans at the very end of the race on the circuit. So yeah, make sure to come along to that stream in about uh, four or five hours from this video being uploaded. But guys, until that stream and until my next video, it has been me, Chazza HD. Goodbye.